Okay, my name is Jay. Um, okay, I wanted to elaborate something uh, my partner said about how uh, the developing world will eventually produce more e-waste than the developed world. And yeah, he's right about that, but um, it's not like, I'm, like we don't have to wait till they get developed. Um, according to Discovery News, by around 2016, the developing world will generate more e-waste than the developed world. And by 2025, around 2025, the developing world will generate about double the waste developed by the developed world. I mean, seeing that that's how China has a billion, well, more than whatever. <laughs> India and China have billions of people, and we and Europe don't. Okay. Okay, and okay. My, one of my opponents, Brian, was talking about how the countries that we export e-waste to treat their rubies badly, and they have bad working conditions, and you know they, they, they use primitive recycling processes like they're doing it in their backyard. But that's that's kind of why a lot of countries will export there because they don't; those countries don't have the standards that we do. I mean, that's not exactly our problem. I mean. We could help having them set up like facilities. I'm not gonna do a counter plan. Um, okay, so basically what I'm trying to say is e-waste is it should just be way too expensive to recycle it all here. That's why countries will export over there. Um, according to Greenpeace International, rec recycling e-waste over here is ten times more expensive than recycling. Overseas, because we have, you know, safety standards, big facilities. We don't do it in burning pits and leave everything all over the place. Okay, and I'm gonna go over two main points as to. Well, the first one would be that the ban would have negative impacts on the developed and the developing world, and second, that the ban itself isn't really wouldn't really be effective and just can't really work. Okay, so the first, as far as how it's how it would be bad, um, trade bans have negative economic and social impacts in developing countries, like my partner said. Discovery News, from Discovery News, Eric Williams, a professor in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at Arizona State, um, acknowledges that many people in the developing world make a living from fixing and selling the used electronics. And not only is it a source of employment, but because we're also exporting used electronics, they have an access to computers, like our old computers or our old TVs that we don't need anymore because they're better ones out. But for them, that's really good. Um, okay, and as far as the, how much employment we're talking about overseas, in China, the city of Wuyu is basically the, the world capital for e-waste, as far as e-waste recycling. Um, over there, they employ 150,000 workers. And also, in going back to Greenpeace, going to Greenpeace International, um, 80,000 Indian workers are employed in those in recycling cities in India. So, summing up that first point, uh, export bans not only fail to solve the problem of informal recycling, but also cause negative impacts on vulnerable people in the developing world. And as far as the how it doesn't solve the problem of informal recycling, like Jin said, eventually the developing world in four years will generate more e-waste than we do. There's still going to be it's still going to be bad for the environment because they're still going to be using informal processes whether we give them e-waste or not. And with them making more than us, it doesn't really matter. Okay, second one, second point as far as how the, the ban just wouldn't work. Um, according to BBC News, um, old televisions and computers are still being exported from Europe despite 
the European Union's ban at stopping the trade in the mid 1990s. And how is this possible? Um, well, they they have millions of ships coming in and out of their ports every year, and it's it's impossible to check every single ship that comes through. Rotterdam is Europe's busiest port. Millions of ships pass through there, coming in and out, and even with the e-waste ban, only 3%, again, according to BBC News, is only 3% of the containers that go on the ships to leave Europe in Rotterdam are checked. So that's, I mean, if you're banning e-waste, you, and you only check 3% of the ships, that's, that's not gonna stop it. Um, and also not just, banning of the export, but also the banning of the importation of U.S. doesn't work because uh, according to Discovery News, China um, China banned the importation of U.S. in 2002, and, but yet obviously they're still taking in imports, like their town of Wii, which is, there's just U.S. everywhere. So they're still taking in even though they've banned it. And also, from Time Magazine, uh, Indian importers have long exported a loophole in their bans of importing e-waste. Um, yeah.